Okay, so in this video, we're going to look at the concept of limiting reactants. Now, limiting reactant uh, is the one reactant within a reaction that limits the amount of product that is formed. Okay, so this is going to be something that's fully consumed. There's none of it left over at the end. Let's look at this with regards to a specific reaction. Let's say we have aluminum reacting with iron to oxide to produce just solid elemental iron and aluminum oxide. Okay, so let's go ahead and balance this. Looks like we got three oxygens here. So we need three oxygens with our iron oxide. Then we got three elemental iron and then that we go back to our aluminum. We need two aluminums. So now we have our balanced reaction. We have the ability to relate reactants with each other and the reactants with the products. So let's look at our example here, okay? So our example is that what we are given, the data that we are provided, is that we have 18 grams of aluminum and that will react with 30 grams of iron oxide, okay? So we have these two reactants. A good way that we know that we have a limiting reactant type of issue or type of problem is that we see two reactant masses provided to us or amounts, moles, etc. Okay? So we have the mass of reactant A, aluminum, mass of reactant B, iron oxide. So what we need to do is we need to figure out well which of these two is going to limit how much of the product we're going to get. Okay? And what we're trying to find out is we want to find out what mass of aluminum oxide will be formed. Okay, so we're going to do this by saying, well, what if we have 18 grams of aluminum? How much iron oxide do we need to get rid of all that 18 grams? And then we're going to get to a conclusion from that. So we do 18 grams of aluminum. This is a mass to mass conversion. Each mole of aluminum is 26.98 grams. Okay, and then we want to convert moles of aluminum to moles of our other reactant, iron oxide. So we have the conversion factor based on our balance equation, two moles of aluminum is three moles of our iron two oxide. And then finally we can end up with our actual molar mass of our iron oxide. And that's 71.84 grams of iron oxide per one mole. Okay, so we've converted mass to moles, moles of aluminum, moles of iron oxide, to find the mass. And so what we would find is that after this reaction is over, or sorry, after this calculation is over, we need 72 grams of our iron oxide required to react with all of that aluminum we start with. So we're going to compare this to what we actually have. So we need 72 grams. We only have 30 grams. So we're not going to be able to react all of our aluminum. We're going to run out of iron oxide before our aluminum gets fully reacted. Because this mass here is greater than what we start with, which is our 30 grams of our iron oxide, we see that, therefore, that iron oxide is our limiting reactant. It's going to run out first before all of our aluminum is gone, and therefore it's going to limit how much of our product, our aluminum oxide, we get. So what we're going to do is we're going to take that limiting reactant, and we're going to use it and say, well, if all that reacts, how much of my product am I going to get? Okay, so we have our 30 grams of iron two oxide, and we're going to convert that to the mass of aluminum that would be formed to that. So again, we're going to use our molar mass, one mole of our iron oxide is 71.84 grams. And then we're going to use the stoichiometric relationship from our balanced equation. One mole of, of aluminum oxide equates to three moles of that iron two oxide being reacted. And then finally we could go ahead and use 
the molar mass of our aluminum oxide, uh, which is 101.96 grams per mole. So now we see we started with our limiting reactant, which was our 30 grams of our iron oxide, and we end up getting what we would see as 14 grams of our aluminum oxide formed from what we started with, from our limiting reactant of our iron 2 oxide. So we're going to see this is going to be the way that we're going to think through limiting, react limiting reactants. We look at the amounts of each, figure out which one's going to be fully consumed, which in this case is our iron 2 oxide, and that means we're going to have extra or excess amount of our aluminum, because we're not going to get rid of all of it based upon the amount of iron oxide that we look at. I'll see you in class.